Hi guys, I'm Liviu and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk a little about oscilloscopes and why they are so cool. Particularly I have on the table a Hantec 6254BC which is a USB based DSO oscilloscope, digital storage oscilloscope. I personally think that this device would be the best choice for someone who doesn't want to kill the bank but in the same time also wants to measure a lot of stuff and especially because this Hantec has four channel inputs. So this means that you can actually measure four different signals in the same time. Obviously in the oscilloscope worlds the specifications are not always that true <laughs> because the rated specifications would change if you enable all four channels or only two and so on. But I, I'm not going to get into so much details. Obviously you can find the link from the Banggood site to this device. They also have two channel options for this uh, oscilloscope which are obviously cheaper. This one is around $200 so I, I guess it's a pretty pretty nice device for an entry level coder or electronic uh, enthusiast. Why are oscilloscopes so damn cool? Well, they measure signals in the time domain versus voltage domain. So basically you can measure changes in voltage over time. Some oscilloscopes also include some other type of measurements inside the device so that you can measure the spectrum of the signal you are analyzing. But basically an oscilloscope measures voltage difference over time and that can be very helpful when you are measuring digital signals which switch on and off pretty quickly on a very short period of time. For example in the FPV world DSHAT or serial connection are two signals that you can actually measure them and see what data is being transmitted or if any data is present there. So this is basically what an oscilloscope does. Obviously you can go online and uh, read about oscilloscopes. There is a ton of literature about oscilloscopes that you can read and I highly recommend it because it's uh, pretty cool. So this Hantec uh, 6254 BC came with two probes, only two probes, which are these ones. They have a BNC connector on one side and the actual probe on the other side. You have also a ground clip here but when you are trying to measure very delicate signals for example if you want to measure the noise in a power supply this ground loop it's a no-go situation and you actually need to have a very very short ground to not capture noise from around you the probes are times one or times ten so on times one you don't have any attenuation but the bandwidth of the probe is um, very low and you also have the times 10 which uh, is the most recommended option. Again I'm not going to get into way more technical stuff about probes. I wish they would um, include four probes but they've included two more cables which are straight cables BNC to alligator clips uh, type connectors and I guess that these are meant to be used on cars measuring can stuff around the car injectors and so on but um, yeah they also included an USB cable that goes here and the USB connector has actually two connectors for your laptop because the oscilloscope requires one amp of power and if you didn't know, USBs are rated to max 500 milliampers. So this is why the end that goes to your computer or laptop has two connectors because we need one amp. So two connectors have more power than one. Today I want to show you how a PVM motor control looks like at the motor leads. So because this 
oscilloscope has four channels, we can use three of them to measure the three phases that drive the motor. Obviously, we will not see a perfect sinusoidal AC because the AC for controlling uh, brushless motors is made up of PVM pulses. So we will see a kind of sinusoidal uh, wave generated by PVM pulses. Okay, so let me connect this to my PC. I am going to take both of the probes and connect them to channel 1, channel 2 but I still need one more because we need three channels and for that I have a lot of probes from different other devices I have on hand so I will use a third probe that will be used for the same thing okay so for those of you who didn't see my video about repairing the Tiny Hawk this is the board I've repaired in that video I've connected the motor outputs to one motor and I've connected three resistors to each motor output and on the other side they are all connected together and that's because we need a virtual ground so I will connect my ground here one channel I will connect to one motor lead another channel to the other motor lead and channel 3 to the last phase of the motor so now we connected all the channels 1, 2 and 3 to the motor phase. I will need to connect this to my PC and open up the BL Heli GUI so that we can go into the motor test tab and be able to spin the motor. This is the interface the oscilloscope comes with. We can select from here the vertical axis. We can select the channel 1 which is on. As you can see if I press on off the channel signal disappears. We have a 2 volts per division so that means that for each division we will have 2 volts. The coupling is set to AC and the probes are attenuated by a factor of 10. I have selected the same settings on each of the three channels. So I've uh, connected everything and let's spin up the motor and as you can see on the screen we already have the sinusoidal control of the motor obviously phased out because we need to turn the motor so this is why the phases are not aligned because they fire up in sequences as you can see our signal it's not perfect. I mean it's choppy and stair like and that's because the signal is generated by means of PVM pulses. So this is how we can recreate an AC signal like this and if we go closer and what I mean by closer is a shorter period of time we can actually see pulses. So a pretty neat feature of oscilloscopes is the trigger. The trigger is the threshold voltage on where the oscilloscope finds the signal. Let's say it like that. So right now I have the trigger mode on edge. As you can see we have here a lot of other options including serial connections and the trigger sweep right now it's set to auto and we can set it on single and the oscilloscope was stopped right after it triggered and I trigger it again what we can do now is measure the PVM pulses and find out the frequency of the PVM with what this uh, motor is actually powered let me turn off the motor because it's making a lot of noise so we have measured the source channel 1, 2 or 3 or 4 but we are not using the 4 we can measure stuff on vertical, which is the amplitude of the voltage, and horizontal, which is the time-based measurement. So, we can measure the frequency. So, this is the PVM frequency 
that this board uses. Obviously there are ESCs that use a higher PVM frequency, but those ESCs have better components on them. For instance, this is a WHOOP board, so, well, maybe in BL Heli you can change the PVM frequency and modify it. And you can actually see that it was modified. So, as I've said uh, earlier, this is how we create the, um, the AC needed for the motors to, to turn. And we create it by means of PVM pulses. Obviously, on one motor output you have six switches, MOSFETs in most cases. And those six MOSFETs have a pretty complicated switching pattern, which I will not try to explain here. But if you are interested in it, you can search out for um, an AC inverter schematic and how it works if you are keen to find out this. I hope you liked this video. I really recommend this hand tech for the price, for the specs, in some cases for the portability because it's very light. You can throw it in your laptop backpack and have a means of measuring digital signals and stuff like that. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this introduction into oscilloscope was good for you. You will find into the description all the links to what gear I use. Again, thank you very much guys. Until the next time, bye.